If you're part of the population segment that was simultaneously worried enough about your safety to buy body armor at any point last year, but also cheap enough to kind of just grab whatever the closest thing that you could get your hands on at the time was, whatever that might be, stay tuned because we ruined a couple thousand dollars worth of level three and four plates out in the desert in the most unscientific way possible and oof. <laughs> What is up guys, my name is John with pewpewtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things anecdotal, ballistic, hee-haw testing related. Jokes aside, I think it's pretty fair to say that living through the past year has been a pretty wild ride, and with some body armor manufacturers reporting close to a 450% spike in sales around that same time period that some of us were hoarding toilet paper and hand sanitizer like absolute lunatics, I think it's also fair to say that some of us saw which way the wind appeared to be blowing and got spooked about the prospect of entering the cool zone without some adequate protection. But that also begs the following questions. Just what is a reasonable level of threat protection to have on hand if you're just kind of a regular guy? Just what is a level four plate? And how is that even determined? To what extent is body armor performance a highly polished marketing shtick? And perhaps most importantly, why is my Instagram now filled with targeted ads for armor related products from wish.com? For the unfamiliar, the National Institute of Justice the National Institute of Justice, or NIJ, NIJ, is the US government's regulatory apparatus responsible for testing and assigning threat performance levels to body armor, primarily for the benefit of law enforcement, but commercial submissions are also accepted for testing should a manufacturer want to advertise their products as being, quote, NIJ certified on the civilian market as well. And without getting too lost in the weeds, it's probably going to be beneficial to define exactly what those NIJ level 3 and four standards actually are. On paper, level three plates are the first level of armor that offer protection against rifle rounds. Specifically, level three should be able to take a total of six hits of spaced out 762 by 51 millimeter NATO M80 ball rounds, traveling at about 2,700 feet per second. Essentially, not much different than your standard Winchester 308 hunting cartridges. However, here's where things get a little bit tricky. While level three plates do usually stop various lead core 556 cartridges, depending on the construction material, they may fail against cartridges with mild armor piercing properties. Pure polyethylene plates, for example, will most likely fail against M855 green tip 556, while M193 may succeed in penetrating steel armor, etc. To complicate things a little further, some armor manufacturers have taken to marking their plates as 3+, a threat rating not actually recognized by the NIJ, but meant to indicate a sort of in-between zone where a level 3 plate can take some 5.56 AP hits, but without meeting the significantly higher threat rating that would constitute a level 4 plate. And I'll bet you're starting to understand now why this can get a little bit confusing. Level four plates are currently the highest rated threat level of armor recognized by the NIJ, and in theory, should be able to stop level three six hits of spaced out M80 ball, all 556 threats, including M855 and 193, while additionally being able to take at least one round of armor piercing 30 6 black tip without failing. While we tested a pretty big batch of steel armor a few years ago to kind of find out what exactly causes steel to fail, we haven't really been able to give modern composite armors the same treatment until now. And like I said, this is inherently not a scientific process. We're just a bunch of dorks shooting body armor out in the desert. So take from this what you will. This is not a lab and this is not done in the sort of rigid controlled environment that presumably bullet scientists have access to. Additionally, as compared to the bevy of already existing armor testing videos out there, Welcome. We set out specifically to make these things fail, as in our opinion, it's way more interesting to show that on camera and kind of get into the mechanics of trying to figure out what made the plate get penetrated by whatever round you fired at it, than sitting there at a bench rest and kind of carefully choosing out, you know, equidistant spots that you can hit on the plate. And our research investments are strategically focused 
to make sure that it survives so that you get your marketing check. This is an example of obviously a bomb suit. And can walk off into that sunset satisfied that you have shilled a product for your overlords. That's our mission. Later losers, daddy's got a timeshare in Costa Rica, courtesy of Big Armor. With all of that out of the way, here's the setup. We devised a six shot string on each level three plate variant, specifically to see what exact type of damage each individual round would cause to the plate in the following order. First up is Tula 122 grain 762 by 39 hollow point, followed by a PPU and lady ball, then your standard Wolf Copper Jacketed 55 Grain 223, American Eagle 55 Grain XM193, and M855 Green Tip Spicy Lad, and lastly, the inevitable kill shot courtesy of a 30-06 armor piercing black tip round if the plate managed to survive that far. As the NIJ testing standard is done from about 15 meters or 50 feet or so, we measured that same distance and posted up to get our expensive destruction game on, precariously securing each plate to our creepy disembodied ballistic gelatin torso, helpfully provided by Clear Ballistics, to give us a better idea of just how nasty gunshot wounds look when your people PPE fails. The first level 3 plate to be offered to the jealous and angry gods of body armor was an Umwipa Elafros plate from Spartan Armor. Weighing in at just about 3.5 pounds with a thickness of about an inch and a half, the Elafros is comprised of ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene in an anti-spall coating of sorts, making it one of the lighter and lower profile plates we murdered that day. The first shot with the Tula 762x39 is about what you'd expect. A pretty minimal entry hole with a bit of back face deformation, no real surprises there. A follow up shot with M80 ball a few inches away produced pretty similar results. A small point of entry up front with some rear face deformation that'd probably have your body in pretty banged up shape from blunt trauma alone, but you're gonna be alright champ. The damage from Wolf 223 was so negligible that we actually had a hard time finding the impact, and its effect on the rear of the plate was practically zero. We managed to induce a tiny bit more rear face deformation with the slightly zippier XM193, but still, the Elafros survives relatively intact. Until... a oh, whoops, green tip! You dead, son. And here is a fantastic demonstration of how materials can play a huge role in ballistic outcomes when it comes to body armor. While level 3 plates on their own aren't technically rated for XM193, the Elafros ate it just fine, while that same XM193 round would likely defeat a level 3 steel plate. However, the steel core nature of the M855 green tip round sailed through the polyethylene with no issue, striking the plate slightly low and to the right of center, doing some ballistic cartwheels through the material and exiting the backside of the plate about an inch higher before piercing our poor gel man's left pec and delivering a messy confetti burst of shrapnel to what would be his left lung, leaving the steel penetrator entirely intact near the rear of the dummy. Needless to say, that's a pretty bad day, and as the plate failed against green tip, we saw no reason to subject it to any further abuse. Our gelatin boy still has a real rough day ahead of him. Next up is LA Police Gear's level 3 plate, weighing in at about 5 pounds and coming in at about 1 inch of total thickness. It's also definitely kind of on the budget side cost-wise, and perhaps somewhat concerningly, arrived sporting some fresh Made in China stickers while smelling like the inside of a shoe store. Hmm. The LAPG plate is also a bit different construction-wise as compared to the pure Umwipa of Spartan's plate. This one's got a ceramic strike face with an aluminum oxide or alumina backer. Let's see how it do. And here is our first big notable difference materials-wise. The LAPG plate ate the Tula 762 just fine with minimal back face deformation. But, as you can see, that cavity in the front spewed a lot of ceramic materials outwards in the process, but we'll come back to that a bit later. The plate handled M80 just fine, with perhaps even less back bulge than the Elafros, if only slightly. Wolf 223 was stopped also, but the hit landed just below the Tula 762x39 shot, and wound up linking the two blown out areas to create what's now a likely compromised strike face of about 4 inches tall, which is pretty spooky. 
XM193 was stopped in the upper right portion of the plate. But the blow took a good chunk of the plate's top foam edge with it as well. M855 hit a bit low of center and was similarly stopped in its tracks, and neither round did much to the rear surface of the plate at all, earning the LAPG plate a warrior's death via 30-06 black tip. The round hit just a bit low and left of our 855 shot and punched clean through, leaving a golf ball-sized deformation on the rear and dragging a whole lot of nasty, extraneous materials into that wound channel along with it. Needless to say, you're probably already in a supremely shitty situation if someone is shooting at you inside of 50 feet with armor-piercing 30-06 and the damage that that black tip round did to our punished gelatin man is pretty nasty. It's also worth noting, I think, that LAPG appears to use the somewhat clinical term NIJ Level 3 Tested on their product page, with an accompanying NIJ logo or seal of approval. What that likely means is that LAPG or the manufacturer they source these plates from have done their own independent testing and found that their product does indeed meet or exceed NIJ certification, but without sending the armor directly to the NIJ for testing, if that makes any kind of sense. Whether that's accurate, or even a distinction that matters at all, I'll leave that up to you to decide. I just thought it was a tiny bit of information that seemed important to note somewhere. So I did it here. All right, let's go. <laughs> up next, RMA Armaments Level 3 Plus Plate, comprised of a ceramic strike face with a polyethylene backer, about four and a half pounds and a little over 1.2 inches in thickness. The self-proclaimed King of Armors 3 Plus plate swallowed that Tula 762 with no issues and minimal rear blunt force ouches. But that NATO M80 ball landed a pretty nasty hit on the upper right portion of the plate that, while stopped, would likely result in a pretty painful blow to one's collarbone if you're wearing your plates correctly. But you know, it beats being dead. Probably. Interestingly, the RMA plate appeared to throw almost zero ceramic frag out of the front of the plate on impact, as compared to the LAPG Level 3, even if its rear face deformation was slightly worse. Wolf 223 did next to nothing, and 855 and 193 were similarly eaten, but with significantly larger rear bumps, until at last we took the king out behind the shed to be put down with a black tip that punched straight through the rear with a neat fiber-laden hole. R.I.P. RMA, you were a good boy. Some say the best, some say. <laughs> Lastly, as far as the level 3s go, we've got AR500's Umwipa plate, which comes in at 3.3 pounds and 1.3 inches thick. First shot with the Tula was handled no problemo with a sort of interesting minimal amount of deformation on both the rear and front surfaces, but all good otherwise. M80 Ball was handled without issue as well, although it did induce an odd horizontal perforation in the nylon on the plate's rear face without actually penetrating it. Interestingly enough, even though a pure polyethylene level 3 plate isn't technically rated for it, the AR500 Umwipa plate handled Wolf 223, 193, and 855 all, with a large lump forming pretty much dead center in the middle of the plate, but all good penetration-wise. For its troubles, the plate earned a vaunted kill shot from the black tip, which hit a little high of center, swerved upwards through the plate, exited the rear about two inches higher than it entered, finally climbing through the poor gel man's trachea and exiting the rear of his neck to fly off somewhere into the desert. I mean, I guess if it's your time to get the card punched, taking an instant lights out shot is probably the way to go, but also, oof. And that's a wrap for our level 3 plate variants with some mildly interesting, if not altogether unexpected, results. Again, probably the bigger takeaway here is just how much of a difference build material makes even among plates that are technically in the same threat level category. Demonstrating that while the NIJ guidelines are obviously a good indicator protection-wise, there's a pretty real difference between what happens in a lab and what happens when you let a bunch of dickheads with no scientific background chew through some armor. Standing atop the ruined fragments of our level 3s, we turn now to our level 4s, and we've actually tweaked the formula here slightly to make sure that we are are inducing failure, and we can just gather what we may from the results. 
One of the bigger things we've always been curious about is what exactly multi-hit means when it comes to body armor. And as mentioned above, the NIJ standards dictate that a multi-hit plate must be capable of withstanding six spaced hits from M80 ball. And sure, that's probably a pretty good indicator of overall ballistic integrity for armor conceived of by science wizards far more intelligent than I, but if you're unlucky enough to get shot at to begin with, what are the odds that any string of hits are going to wind up being sufficiently spaced enough to allow the plate to withstand all of them? To us, it seems far more interesting to see what exactly happens to a level 4 plate if you hit it with maybe a tighter group than it's advertised as being able to stand up to, and seeing what happens from there. Our level 4 test was performed as follows. The Tula 762x39 appetizer remains, but this time we chose to double tap the plate with M80 ball, specifically aiming for the section of plate damaged by the first shot when sending the second. From there, we decided to ditch the 855 and 193, instead subjecting the plates to two groups of two hits from Shitty Wolf 55 Grain 223 for a total of four in a reasonably small cluster, finally sending a black tip home for dessert. Up first, another LEPG Chinesium plate, but this time in theory rated for level 4 threat protection against those pesky 30-06 black tips. It's a bit heftier at 6.5 pounds per plate, with a thickness of 1 and 1 8 inch, but that's to be expected with level 4s. First shot with our Tula 762 was stopped in a similar manner as the level 3. Not a ton of rear deformation, but a pretty significant cavity opens up on the front side of the plate in the little space where the ceramic used to live. Not great, but definitely survivable. Our first shot of M80 in the upper right again caused some pretty significant cavitation and spewing of ceramic chunks out onto our table. And here's where it starts to get interesting. The follow-up shot, aimed in that same general area, punched clean through the plate and lodged a 308 projectile and associated jacket shrapnel again in the lung area of our beleaguered gelatin colleague. Oof. So there's a few things going on here, obviously, and this is exactly what we wanted to demonstrate. While a plate on paper might be rated to take multiple rifle rounds and keep on trucking, the reality is that when your plate spews huge ceramic chunks outwards that leave a cavity behind significantly larger than the round you fired at it, you're left with continually decreasing ballistic real estate that hasn't been compromised to take that follow-up shot in. In our case, that first M80 round knocked out so much ceramic strike face that the second round simply couldn't be slowed down enough to be stopped by the polyethylene and alumina backer that remained. Sure, the plate can probably take a total of six completely symmetrical and equidistant M80s if you painstakingly make sure to land them just so, but again, how likely is that? From there, we moved on to repeating multi-hits again with Wolf 223, and while the smaller projectiles took less material with them upon each hit, the first two rounds had carved out enough of a cavity that the second two penetrated the plate with ease. Lastly, we moved to an uncompromised section of the plate to see how the LAPG Level 4 reacted to the 30-06 black tip it, in theory, should be able to catch. And lo and behold... It didn't. To us, it appears as though the plate did its best against the almighty black tip and did manage to catch a significant portion of the round, but the jacket fragments and the penetrator itself blew the lower seam of the nylon away from its edge material, allowing pieces of the round to escape downwards in the new weak spot the distension created. While undoubtedly this is a better alternative than taking the full AP round straight to the gooey bits, this is still obviously undesirable, and honestly a bit surprising considering level 4 plates by nature should be able to stop at least one 30-06 black tip. It could be that the previous penetrations with M80 and Wolf compromised the material enough where even a relatively fresh looking segment of the strike face was weakened enough to not be able to handle the round, but that's honestly just guesswork on our part. 
Next up, we've got RTS Tactical's level 4 plate, coming in at 6.3 pounds with just over an inch in thickness, and again, featuring a mixture of ceramic strike face with a PE backer and waterproof urethane coating. Our initial 7.62x39 shot landed dead center. And, interestingly enough, as compared to the plates wrapped in a nylon material, the polyurea coating appears to help significantly with the amount of cavitation in the ceramic materials any individual round causes. No particularly nasty rear face deformation, so on to the M80 we go. Once again, the first M80 that landed in the upper left portion of the plate dealt such severe damage to the ceramic that the follow-up shot completely blew the upper left edge of the plate out and penetrated with ease. Good night, sweet gelatinous prince. On to the four rounds of Wolf 223, and we've got some kind of interesting results. While there doesn't appear to be any obvious exit hole from any of the four rounds, it does appear that the string of hits damaged the plate enough that they began deflecting out of the side wall of the upper right corner of the plate, sending jacket fragments and spalling into what would be the sensitive under armpit area of our boy if only he had limbs. It's impressive that the plate withstood two direct hammer pairs in the same area nonetheless. Even if showering your limbs with burning pieces of metal is kind of a shitty consolation prize, it's much better than the alternative. Probably. Finally, that black tip comes a knockin' and whoo boy, we got ourselves a pretty catastrophic blowout. Failure. Yeah, whatever, fuck it. While the backing material did slow the round down enough not to create any obvious rear face penetrations, the deformation length here is pretty damn wild, and the round may have just blown the entire lower seam out and escaped directly into the ground, or our gelatin boy's non-existent genitalia. Gelat... gelatinalia. In addition, the sum total damage has cut the plate right in two, which we didn't see occur on any of the other level 4 plates we shot up, such that the entire thing can be opened lengthwise like a shredded ballistic trapper keeper. This is just complete guesswork on our part, so take it for what you will, but it almost appears as if the fact that the RTS's plate wasn't spewing ceramic outwards due to the polyurea coating may have redirected all of that kinetic energy inwards instead, eventually compromising whatever adhesive holds the entire package together. But we're not scientists, so take that anecdotal conclusion with a grain of salt. Next up is RMA's Level 4 Multicurve, weighing in at a pretty monstrous 8 pounds per plate and 1 inch of thickness. Again, a combination of ceramic and presumably polyethylene. Interestingly, our first Tula 7.62x39 round took a good chunk of ceramic with it, but didn't manage to penetrate the ceramic all the way through, which is what left the backing material exposed on every other plate. This is our first plate to react this way. In addition, there's literally no back face deformation at all, which is pretty damn wild, and perhaps where that extra two pounds comes into play. The RMA plate also seems to throw significantly smaller chunks of ceramic than the others, leaving a smaller overall area compromised upon withstanding a first hit. However, even still, it appears it sustained just enough damage to be compromised by that second hit of M80, which punched clean through despite being a good inch or two away from the first impact. Are you starting to recognize a pattern here? Similarly, the Wolf 223 gradually ate its way through, with penetration finally occurring on the fourth round. Remarkably, the footprint these rounds carved out in the plate is way smaller than any of the others, and even though it did fail in the end, we admittedly drilled pretty close to the same bit of real estate repeatedly. Had those shots been as spread out as our other string of wolf hits on the other plates, the results maybe would have been a little different, but alas. And finally, we move to 30-06. and not only did the RMA level 4 swallow it whole, but the rear deformation of the plate is practically zero. While the LAPG and RTS plates 
kind of stop the black tip? This is our first conclusive dead in its track stop, and it managed to do so without dealing the equivalent blunt force damage of a sledgehammer to your torso in the process. Color us impressed, RMA. Perhaps, perhaps truly you are the king of armor. I take back those things I said. With that first black tip cut, you know we had to see what a second would do. And sadly, it proved to be a bit too much for our hefty friend here. Whether this was just bad luck in landing a hit in an area already compromised from catching that first 30-06 fastball or not, we're not sure, but it punched clean through all the same. Finally, with a pretty impressive result from RMA's level 4 plate, we turn now to Mira Tactical's level 4 plate. Weighing in at just under 6 pounds and only 0.9 inches thick, it's the lightest and thinnest level 4 in this lineup. Again, a combination of ceramic and umwipa. How's it fair? We had no real issues with the Tula 762x39 at all, but it did blow a good amount of ceramic chunks out of the front of the plate. Par for the course at this point, and with minimal but still noticeable deformation on the back. Although that first M80 hit took a good chunk of ceramic with it as well, the follow-up shot left no obvious rear exit hole, although there's a pretty nasty distension in its wake. While we can't say for certain, it almost looks as if the second round was deflected by the remaining backing material, forcing the round upwards as it blew out a corner of the top seam of the plate before shooting off to somewhere in the vicinity of what would be your head and or face but it's the first time we've seen a plate deflect two consecutive M80s, which is commendable in our book, even if the second shot deflected in a way that would wind up lobotomizing you. The string of wolf hits, however, would prove to be too much for our plucky mirror plate, and the fourth round penetrated the backing material after the previous three had substantially compromised it. But what about the black tip, though? With only one plate so far, catching an armor-piercing 30-06 without deleting itself, the bar is set. And even though you're gonna have quite the stomach ache from these borderline tennis ball sized lumps in the plate, you're gonna live. Probably. Black tip number one was caught and defeated, which means it's time for a second. And surprisingly, the Mira plate ate a second black tip with no issue outside of an even larger rear deformation. Legitimately impressive, and with that, our reverse science body armor murder fest comes to a close. So what are the takeaways to be had here, if any at all, considering the entirely anecdotal nature of this entire little experiment? Again, the big thing for us is that we wanted to show exactly what having bad enough luck to catch two rounds in close proximity to one another actually looks like outside of the sterile lab environments where conceivably this stuff is all tested. Especially in a climate like the past years, where a ton of folks who are probably new to all of this stuff have recently found the need to armor up for whatever reason. To us, it's critical to be real with folks about just what kind of abuse PPE is actually capable of standing up to, lest anyone somehow be fooled by slick-ass marketing into thinking they've got god mode on when donning a set of level 4s. I think pretty emphatically, we've proved that that isn't the case whatsoever. That being said, it's still going to be up to you to decide what exact level of protection you do or don't need, as I'm personally of the opinion that probably a ton of folks don't necessarily need armor plates, depending on what it is that you do and or are worried about. I also think it's telling that some of the less expensive armor plates had a tendency to blow out all or most of their ceramic strike face on the first hit, leaving you primed to take a blowout shot for follow-ons if you manage to take a second somewhere in that same vicinity. The difference in quality between manufacturers then becomes a game of limiting the ceramic strike face lost from an initial impact, while also mitigating the amount of blunt force trauma your body is subjected to as all of that kinetic energy is transferred into your being. RMA was hands down the clear winner in the remarkable lack of rear face deformation even from an armor piercing 30-06 round. But it obviously comes at the cost of being a heavier and slightly thicker plate compared to the competition. But the Mira Tactical Level 4 was the only plate to survive two black tips, arguably two successive M80s, and it almost shrugged that string of four Wolf 223 hits, all while being the lightest and thinnest level 4 that we destroyed. As always, you've got to figure out where you are personally in terms of cost, threat protection, weight, and so forth. 
but I think we can pretty firmly say that Mira and RMA are the clear winners for the money in our book, even if it might be overkill for what most of us will ever face, unless you're planning on kicking down a grand wielding boomer's door to take away their AARP discount or whatever. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification thing. I think that helps us out. I don't really know. The algorithm does what it wants. We've got shirts. You can find links to that right down in the description below. And we've also worked with some of the manufacturers that were kind enough to send us armor to destroy to get a discount coupon code for you. Just for you. No one else. Just you. That's right down below as well. My name's John with PP Tactical, 